kids. And I love the stories and the characters as well. So um, sometimes it's based on autobiographical things like Penny Lane. Um, the locations are correct. There is a place called Penny Lane. There is a bank that the banker comes from. There is a barber shop. There is a fire station. Um, but I make it up what happens. I mean, I don't know if the guy ever walked out of a plastic bag in the pouring rain. <laughs> but, you know, it was just a nice story. So uh, I like to do that. I like to. Ellen Rigby wasn't anybody I knew, but I did know a lot of, a lot of little old ladies uh, where I lived. Because um, I, I was a Boy Scout. <laughs> And um, Bob a job. <laughs> Bob a job. <laughs> Don't go there. <laughs> and we were saying there was a thing where, as a boy scout, you had to go around and knock on all the doors. Excuse me, have you got Bob a job? And the Bob was a shilling, and a job was a job. So, um, and people say, well, what's that? You say, well, you give me a shilling if I do a job for you. You know, um, it's a bit like selling cookies, kind of thing. So, but you had to do a job, and they said, oh, I'm sorry, I've got no jobs. So you had to be enterprising. You say, well, you've got a shed out of the back, have you? Yes. Does it need clearing out? Yes. <laughs> I'm your man. <laughs> <laughs> so you go and do it, and they, you know, they give you some money. I don't know how I got the... <laughs> sorry, I'm not the job. The, the job, the job, the, the, the boy scouts, the boy scouts. Yes, yeah, so, so the old ladies. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, so I used to I used to know some of the old ladies on the uh, uh, housing estate where we lived, and uh, I get to know them. And I used to think they were really fascinating people um, because they had great stories. And you know, at that time, they could tell stories about the war because this was shortly after World War II, and they would tell these fascinating stories. And I would just sit and listen to it, I loved it. And I remember one of these ladies had a, a, a crystal radio. A lot of people had at the time. And they made radios out of crystals, which to me is, was magical. Still sounds magical. Um, anyway, those kind of ladies, you know, I liked them. So I'd go and do a shopping for her and chat and that stuff. So that character became, I gave a name to that character. And that was Ellen Rigby, and I, I imagine she was very lonely and spinster and wasn't going to get married. And then I imagined the, uh, the vicar or the priest uh, who was working in the church where she worked. Um, and I first of all came up with the thing, Father McCartney. <laughs> Father McCartney. Because it, it scanned nicely. And I took it to John, I said, Father McCartney, he says, great. I said, no, I'm uncomfortable, but that's my dad. <laughs> I said, um, we're going to look up something else. So again, going back into the annals of 1922, um, we, looked, we had our telephone books. I don't know if anyone remembers those. But, um, and you could look up people's, people's addresses and uh, telephone numbers. So we flicked through, we got to McCarthy, to Durner, Mackenzie, oh yeah, that's good. So we became Father Mackenzie. Uh -huh. um, so you know, all those nice little things are hard to put together uh, a story and inventing characters, which is something I like to do. Mm. One of the big characters in this book is Liverpool. The city, the city you come from. And I'm thinking that most of the people in this hall don't know much about Liverpool. Could you introduce an American audience in 2023 to 